finding the volume of pyramids and cones. Um, so the formula for finding the volume of a three-dimensional solid is, um, when it's a pyramid or a cone, is one-third times the area of the base times the altitude. So, um, and this is a little bit different than what we talked about in class, because in class we used the terminology for a height rather than an altitude. So just keep in mind here that anytime they're talking about an altitude in this worksheet, they're talking actually about the height of the pyramid, the distance from the base to the top point. So this general formula here of one third times area of the base times the height is used for anything that has that cone or pyramid shape. However, I will go ahead and give you the formula for that of a cone specifically. So that is one third pi times the radius squared times the height. And the only difference here is that they've replaced the um, area of the base with the formula that we use to find the area of the circular base here. So pi r squared area of a circle. Um, so keep in mind that this formula just works for cones only. It doesn't work for anything else. So don't try to use this if you're looking at say a regular square pyramid, because it's not gonna work. You don't have a radius there anyways. So I'm going to look at doing a couple problems with these um, and give you an idea of kind of what you need to be doing um, on this worksheet. So let's take an example problem here of a regular square pyramid with an edge of six and an altitude of four. So first thing you need to do is think about what the base shape for this figure is. So it is a square pyramid, which means that the square is the base shape. So when you're looking at this, it would look kind of something like this as far as the shape itself. And this base down here is a square. It's just kind of drawn slanted to the side for the purpose of drawing it as a two dimensional shape. And each of the edges on this base square is six. So to find the area of a square, you're going to do side times side or side squared um, so this would be 6 times 6 or 6 squared, which is 36. So this is going to be our area of the base. Okay, so next thing we need to identify is what the altitude or height is. So in this one, the altitude is 4. So for my formula, it would be 1 third times area of the base, which is 36, times the altitude, which is four, or the height. Um, so you can just put this into the calculator at this point, and you'll be all right. Now, one thing that I want to point out here is that the way that you put in one third in the calculator is important, okay? So if you know your fractions as decimals, um, you may know that one third is actually equal to um, 0 0.3 repeating and if you take and you just put 0 0.3 into the calculator you're going to get a much different answer than if you actually do a third um, so what I would recommend instead of doing 0.3 and I'll show you this in just a moment is if you can do it you do 1 divided by 3 and that will give you your decimal taken out to several places if you have something a little bit more advanced say a graphing calculator or even just FTI in about the 20s um, that has the ability to put in multiple numbers at once, you know, more than just your basic eight function normal calculator, you can do this all at once, doing one divided by three to put in a third and then multiplying it by 36 and then times four. Now, if your calculator doesn't do that, um, some of them you can still go ahead and put in just one divided by three times 36 times four and do it. But if you want to put in that decimal, don't just put in 0.3. Because if you do, that number is off by about five. That's a big difference and it's going to really mess up what you're seeing as your answer. But what you can do is if you take this and put it in to say about four or five threes, and then add in your numbers, this right here, it is not exactly 48, but it is a lot closer, and when you round this, you would get 48. I will recommend you go to at least 
five or six threes if you're just gonna put this in. A lot of times I'll just hit it till I kind of get tired of hitting three in the calculator and then leave it at that. So that's how you do it um, when you're given an edge and an altitude. Now let's take a similar situation, but a little bit different in that I'm not, let's say I'm not given the altitude, but instead they give me a slant height. So let's take a slant height of maybe, um, let's see here, I'm gonna go five. So what we're doing to do here, if we know the slant height, is to find the altitude. So if you were to take this pyramid and slice it right down the middle, right where that point is, you would end up getting a slice that looks like a triangle. And the distance across the bottom of the triangle would be the distance across the bottom of your pyramid. So in this case, it would be six. And then the slant height would be the distance running from the outside edge of it up to the top. It is kind of the slanted figure. So this right here is the slant height. Now if you were to drop the altitude here and draw it in, that's where the altitude would go. And then you kind of erase this part here and ignore it for the moment. You end up with this little triangle here, a little right triangle. And this side here would be half the length it was before. So that would be three. And one of the things that we can do with a right triangle is we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side. So a quick review here of how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is only used for right triangles. And the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse, the long leg. For our purposes, it's always gonna be running the same way. So this side over here, the slant height would be c. And then you could take this height down here as either A or B, I'm gonna say A, and you're just gonna plug those numbers into this formula. So A is three squared, B is the other part here that we don't know. So I'm gonna leave it as a B, and then C was five. To solve this, you wanna start by simplifying it as much as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and square this. Three squared is three times three, so that's a nine. And then five squared is 25. Now our goal is to get B by itself, so we know what B equals. So I'm gonna subtract this nine off of both sides. And that leaves me with B squared equals 16. Now when solving an equation, we always do opposite operations to undo things. And the opposite of squaring a number is taking the square root. So I'm gonna take the square root of both sides of this equation and those cancel each other out, leaving me with just b, and the square root of 14, of 16, sorry, is four. So if you've forgotten about that, the square root is basically asking you the question, what times itself gives you this number? And if you can't think of that, plug it into a calculator. The calculator will let you know. Um, so for our problem, we still are not quite finished yet. Um, I need to continue on here. So now I know that this is the height of my pyramid. I found earlier that the area of the base was 36. So I'm gonna go back up to my formula and do 1 3rd times 36 times four, which gives us 48. So the volume for this one is 48. Okay. Um, and then kind of the last two things I wanna talk about is the volume of the cones, um, and then a little bit about how the answers are given at the bottom for the puzzle. So here, let's get a volume of a cone problem. Um, let's say that I'm looking for the volume of a cone with a radius of five and a height of 10. So I'm gonna take my formula, one third times pi times radius squared, so five squared times the height, which is 10. Um, and the way that they're giving the answers on this worksheet is that they're doing it what's called in terms of pi. Um, so 
what that means is that you're going to do all of the math involved in the problem except for multiplying by pi. We're gonna kind of keep this as if it were a variable like an x. Um, so in this problem, I need to go ahead and follow order of operations and square the five first. So that gives me one third times pi times 25 times 10. And to simplify this answer down, we want to multiply each of the numbers that is not pi. So I'm gonna take my one third times 25 times 10, and that gives me 83.3 repeating. And then I would just put the pi kind of on it at the end, like we do if that was an x. The x would go at the end. And this would be the answer that you would find on your worksheet is 83.3 repeating thirds um, pi. Now I don't think this answer is not here, and if I recall right, there is not an option on the um, polar packet that has an answer with a decimal and then pi, but that's how you'll see it. And you should not select an answer that has pi unless you are working with a cone. If it is a regular square pyramid or a triangular pyramid, then it's not going to have pi in the answer. Now the other thing that happens here is that there's a couple of these where when you do the Pythagorean theorem, you end up getting a square root that doesn't come out nicely. So with a problem example I gave, the square root of four, uh, 16 ends up being four. But if I do like the square root of 12, that doesn't end up, it comes out as an irrational decimal. Now, what I would normally do is I would just work with that decimal. And that's what I'm gonna have you guys do. But the answers at the bottom give it in what's called um, simplified square root form. So instead of giving a weird decimal, what they've done is they've made that square root as simple as possible through a series of steps that comes up in the trigonometry chapter that we'll go through. Um, but they've left that square root in there. So when it comes to finding your answers there, if you're getting something that's not showing up at the bottom, then what I want you to do is take one of the answers that is at the bottom. So let's say it was like, 15 square root of 3. Then I would want you to take just 15 and then multiply it by whatever the square root of 3 is, which your calculators will do, even if you're not working with a graphing calculator. And this is the answer that you would be looking for from the top of the problem, from the top of the worksheet. So if you found, if this was your answer, 25.98, then you would go with this one. And that would be your answer. Now, a few of your answers may be off if you are rounding um, too far when you do the Pythagorean theorem in a couple of those cases. So for a few of these, you're gonna get really close, maybe not exactly on. I would encourage you to um, use the process of elimination to kind of narrow it down if you're not entirely sure. But keep in mind that the answers are not how you figure out, like the answers at the bottom are not how you figure out the answers to the problems. Like you don't use the puzzle to tell you what answers to put. You use the puzzle to check and make sure that you're doing the right thing, okay? Um, if you're coming up with stuff that's not down at the bottom, send me a photo of your work so far so that I can kind of give you some hints on what to do. Remember that it's not very helpful if you just say, hey, I didn't get anything at the bottom for number 10 and you don't send me anything. Because when I respond to you, I'm going to need some help to figure out where you went wrong. I'm not gonna be able to just pull that out of your head because thankfully we do not have long distance telepathy um, either in this classroom. Um, so, you know, make sure you send me a copy of your work and then I can look through and say, hey, you know, you used the wrong number for the radius or, oh, this is the slight slant height. You need to find the actual height here and I can help you out with that way. But please don't hesitate to call me, um, send me a message or do whatever you need to and get some help with this. There are also um, some resources posted on to Schoology and I will be looking to add a few more in the next few